Today we're going to be painting pine cones in watercolor. Hi, I'm Deb Watson. They'll have some tight realism against a loose background. It's just a nice combination. You can use graphite paper to trace the outline page onto your watercolor paper. We're going to mask out the pine cone and a few of the needles. I'm using an inexpensive craft brush and PBO drawing gum for my masking. You'll see later how easy that is to take off. I like to put it on fairly thick. And besides the cheap mask brush, to get those nice little lines for the pine needles, I'm going to be showing you how to use a toothpick. I often use that for tiny lines. And I also use the incredible nib. We saw the incredible nib in the last video, but quite a few people like to use that for applying masking also. This pine cone would make a nice Christmas card. Feel free to use whatever colors you like best. I realize that all of your materials are going to be slightly different than mine. So you just have to work with what you have. Okay, while the PBO is drawing, let's, let's test some of the colors we might use in the background. One of my favorite colors is cobalt blue, and I'm going to mix it with some green gold, see if I like that. So I may mix it with some raw sienna. It's not much of a green. Okay, so those two, I'm going to say probably not. I know I'm going to need a real dark. Here's the that really super dark purple. That would work. It's, it's a little colorful. This is a color called Perilin Green. It's really a black. Really dark. I think I like that. That mixes well with the cobalt. And then I would probably be putting in some of my pine cone color, which is burnt sienna. Whoa. This uh, this purple, this is one of the new core paints. And it's, it's making a spider for Halloween. It doesn't mix as well with the regular paints. It has a different binder. It, you can blend it, it works fine, really, but it just it makes a very interesting looking thing going on there. Okay, so what did we decide on? We've got cobalt blue, perlin green, burnt sienna, and my green gold. And so for the dark part of the pine cone, just a thick mix of burnt sienna and cobalt blue, but I could add some of that peril and green. And I think I'll be quite happy with those colors. So I've picked my colors. Play with yours on scrap paper until you find something that you like. To get started, I'm wetting the background and then lifting up most of the water with a roll of paper towels. I want the background just damp and I'm going to be mixing up washes of different colors with the colors that I picked. There's cobalt blue, my yellow is a green gold, some of the peril and green. You can make an unlimited number of colors with a limited palette. A limited palette means you pick three to five colors and then do all of your painting with those. It gives you a very nice professional look. 
When I put in large washes in the background, some nice loose washes, you can try to just copy about where I put my colors. Oh, I don't like little tiny spots of colors. Little spots of colors are t distracting and you want them to have enough liquid that they can kind of blend a bit on the paper. It gives you soft edges and it makes a beautiful background. This can be hard to do. It just takes a lot of practice. If yours is not what you want, don't hesitate to lift or rinse it off and have another go at it. But I'm starting first with kind of the light medium values of color. I like to do areas that lead your eye around. I'm putting some of the burnt sienna right in And now I'm going to go for some darker areas. I'll put those right on top. So I'm using some of the dark Perlin green. And I'll probably mix that with a little bit of the other colors. If you have more than one value, light values, medium values, and dark values, you're going to get the most interest possible. But a lot of applying a loose wash is intuitive. So whatever you like is what you should do. See there I spattered color and that's a little bit too much so I'm going to blend a little bit in. If you don't like the size or shape of something, you can lift some of it back off. And just keep working on it until you get something you like. Remember, it's going to dry a lot lighter. Yes, you can see it's a lot lighter and here's the two brushes. I'm going to be applying now that it's dry. I want to put some dark needles on. What we're doing here is called repetition with variation. We masked out some of the pine needles so they'll be light in value even after we paint them. Now I'm putting some hard edged darker pine needles on and I'm using a liner brush. It's also called a script or a rigger. They make the best lines. And that might be enough. For more variation, I'm going to re-wet just a couple areas. Not soppy wet, just damp and put dark in there because then it's going to spread out a bit on the damp paper and so we'll have some pine needles that have soft edges. The more variation you can get, generally the more interest your picture will have. All right, I dried that and I'm going to take the masking off. This is the fun part. PBO tends to pull off in a big sheet and it's kind of fun to pull it off. I'm going to give the pine cone an initial wash of color. You see that I'm not using the tip of my brush. I use the side of my brush for washes and I'm going to use all of my colors using the burnt sienna and the darker mix. And some of the gold down at the bottom. 
and I'm doing it wet enough that it'll blend a little bit and it'll make a lot more interesting color the variation in color plus it repeats the background than if you just painted it all one brown. And now we can start painting some of these pine needles that were masked out in this branch. Of course, you're gonna get more repetition with variation here, because I'm gonna repeat the same colors And part of the branch can be a light value and part of the branch can be a darker value. Now that all the pine needles and the pine cone are painted, and I'm going to put the dark in that I can see on this pine cone. My lines are hard to see because of the washes, so I have to take a close look at the photograph and paint in where I see the dark areas. I'm not making all of the areas the same darkness. I'm varying that. Most of that is my dark mix of burnt sienna, a little cobalt blue, and perlin green. It's not all one shade or value. And the pine cone is all done. Now I think this would make a nice Christmas card. So I think I'm going to take some of my opaque white. I use Pro White by De La Roni. And I'm gonna add a little snow. I'll have some laying on top of this branch. and maybe a little bit on the pine cone. And that's it, I hope you liked it. I hope yours turns out great. Thanks for watching.